So check it out, check it out, check it out. Listen, I've been waiting to do this show for a minute now, and I finally got a chance to do it, so I'm excited about it right now. But I want to really get down into it, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time with, with BS. I'm, I'm, I'm literally just going to go right into it. Okay, so one of the biggest things I've been hearing on social media in the last few days is uh, the Kansas City Chiefs get a lot of calls. I've been hearing that damn near a month now. Um, and, and the truth of the matter is it's quite irritating because it takes away from the game. It makes me, it makes me feel like you're whining. I mean, let's just be real. I mean, if you look at boxing, and boxers always tell you, or the judges always say, you're not beating a champion off points. You got to knock them out. You got to either knock them out or beat the living hell out of them. I mean, it has to be obvious. Uh, clear and concise ass it, it, it just has to be that way. In football and basketball, it's a little different. We always remember the Jordan rules. I mean, hell, Jordan got away with a lot of pushing, got away with a lot of different things. And we say he's the greatest. Well, some of us say he's the greatest that ever played the game. I mean, some people say, oh, all Jordan did was push off. All Jordan did was this. All did. Jordan created separation. Jordan did great things. I, I just, I have learned that people are going to always come up with some BS about why somebody lost or why somebody won. And to me, it just takes away from the damn game. Now, so what did I do? I did something um, a few days ago that I hope you guys enjoy. Because... And I hope it opened your mind to see what I'm talking about, that there's no one particular team that the NFL chose the Chiefs and that they're going to always get the calls. And it's such bullshit. Let me explain to you something. Let me let me just share something with you. I don't know a lot of y'all may know this, y'all may not know this. In 1980, the Houston Oilers and the Pittsburgh Steelers played for the AFC Championship. Now, y'all may not remember that. But that was a that game was physical. That game was back and forth, um, and there's a point in if I'm not gonna leave, if, I, if I if I say it right, there's a point in the third quarter where Houston was starting to get the momentum, and they were starting to get the best of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Mike Renfro made a catch that was unbelievable. I mean, he caught the ball, he dragged two feet, it was clear the referee called him out of bounds. It changed the conclusion. It changed the momentum completely. And the Houston Oilers went on to lose that game. The Pittsburgh went on to win the Super Bowl. The reason I bring that up is that was one of the worst calls I had ever seen to take a touchdown away from a team that had been playing so damn hard. And that was the game that instant replay was born because it was so blatant. And you got YouTube, just go back and watch the damn catch. And well, I was, a, I was a kid at the time, and I remember saying, they cheated Houston out of this game. The referees cheated Houston out of this game. And I remember my dad telling me, and it was so true, my dad said, you can blame the referees for a, a bad call or no call, but the truth of the matter is the Houston Oilers, even after that badass call, could have won that game. Okay, I, I I I just wanted to start off with that. But now, so I I comprised a little list of all the things that I some of the things that I've seen, not all the things, some of the things that I've seen in the NFL, what I thought was questionable. And I'm gonna start off before I get into the Saints and the Chiefs. I'm gonna start off with this. So that maybe y'all know this, maybe y'all don't, because I hear a lot of y'all saying that the Kansas City Chiefs get on the call. Okay, so. In the 2019 AFC Championship and NFC Championship, why is that though that year so important to me? Because the Chiefs and the New Orleans Saints should have been in the damn Super Bowl. I was so mad. It would have been, oh my God, the, most, the best. At that time, the Saints offense was rocking. The Chiefs offense was rocking. Both of them had – the Saints had a great defense, and the Chiefs had an okay view. It would have been one of the best damn Super Bowls ever. But instead, what do we get? We got the damn Rams and the Patriots, and I think the score is 9-6. to six. So what happened? What happened in that Super Bowl? What happened in – why was those two teams playing? Well, the 
the Chiefs lost their game because the winning interception that would have took the Chiefs to the Super Bowl after 49 years would have took them to the Super Bowl. They called uh, D Ford off for offsides. A toe, his damn toe was offside. Lined up in the neutral zone, a neutral zone. It was a toe. They called him offside. And two hours later, two hours on the same damn day, the New Orleans Saints get the no call, which was blatant pass interference. It should have took New Orleans to the catapult, the New Orleans Saints to their second Super Bowl. It should have took the Chiefs to their second Super Bowl in 49 years, and it would have been an epic Super Bowl. But what, what do we get? We don't get anything. So I hear you when you say the Chiefs get out of the call. Well, they didn't get that damn call. And I know the Saints fans got to still be feeling that no call. Okay? If that doesn't get your attention, if that doesn't see how silly you sound when you say the Chiefs get all the calls, because they didn't get that damn call. They went home that day. Brady went to the Super Bowl. Okay. That ain't enough. Maybe that ain't enough. Okay. Uh, the, the Super Bowl, the pet. The, the horrible Super Bowl between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2021 and the Kansas City Chiefs. At that time, Kyron Matthews was playing for the Chiefs. And when that game started, you could see, clearly see, that mm, I don't think the Chiefs going to win this game. Now, don't, don't get it. I'm not taking nothing. I'm not taking a damn thing away from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense because their defense was really, really good that year. I'm not taking nothing. But I want to share something with y'all, and I want to see how y'all think about this. Earlier in that same season, Kansas City played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. And Tyreek Hill had 300 yards passing, 200 in the first half. He, they beat the freaking Tampa Bay. They beat Tampa Bay ass. And now in the Super Bowl, that the same two teams, all of a sudden, the Chiefs, for some reason, can't move the ball. And the defense for the Chiefs, for some reason, is struggling. Well, let me tell you how it all went down. You may not remember this, but first quarter, which changed everything, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are driving. They're in scoring position. They're in the red zone. Tyron Matthews picks off Tom Brady. Great interception. And the referee called illegal contact on Tyron Matthews. This is still to this day baffles me where that damn call come from. Chiefs didn't get that call, and Tampa Bay went on to whoop their ass 31 to 9. Huh. Yeah, that was that was a rough one, man. That was, that was a rough one. So, um, the Eagles Super Bowl with Kansas City. Kansas City get all the calls. Was that not holding? Now I'm gonna tell you something about that Super Bowl for all you conspiracy theorists out there. Go back. And watch that Super Bowl and go back in the second quarter. The Chiefs are driving. They're moving down the field. I think they had a third and seven. Mahomes throws the ball. Juju Smith shoots over the middle. The ball goes incomplete. Juju is literally screaming at the referees that Brad Bear is holding. He's holding. He's holding. It was such a bad damn holding call. I was like, wow. Hmm. So when you saw the referee call that holding penalty in the fourth quarter, if you would have seen that, maybe your ass would be sitting on, on the damn internet talking about, hey, they get all the calls. But that was blatant holding. And Brad Barrett said, and I and I and I quote, we've been holding all day. They just weren't calling, so we felt like it was just part of the game. I've been holding all damn day. Hey, come on, come on, guys. Don't muddy up football because of your jealousy and because of your insecurity or you're hating on, on one team. Don't do that. I mean, I remember, I love it. I have a cousin. We talk sometimes about football. Uh, about three years ago, the Cincinnati Bengals beat the Kansas City Chiefs in Cincinnati. That was the first time Cincinnati beat Kansas City as Mahomes being a quarterback. And in that game, the Cincinnati Bengals had two penalties and the Kansas City Chiefs had 11. 11 damn penalties. It was so damn bad. So Andy Reid was, I thought he was going to have a heart attack on the side. Cincinnati won the game. When they gave their press conference, not one damn time did they mention the referees in the penalty. As a matter of fact, this is what they said. They said, we have to do better. We have too many penalties. 
Man, y'all stop all that bullshit. Mm-hmm. Some of y'all make me sick because you don't even know the game. You just literally talking for somebody else that's talking. Ooh, the Chiefs get all the calls. The Chiefs get all the calls. Look, if you want to beat the damn champions, go and beat them. If the referees going to give them calls, like you say, what shit beat them anyway? Because you can beat them. Do you know how you beat them? You just beat the shit out of them. That way the referees can't hurt you. But the problem is, is you can't. And now it's a, it's a close game. Mahomes, man, Mahomes has brought people, been brought the Chiefs back so many damn times. And he ain't need no help from the referees. He ain't, did he, did he get any help from the referees in the Buffalo game? Nope. 13 damn seconds. How many of y'all thought that game was over? I mean, how, how, how many think that? Ooh, did he get any help in the Super Bowl against the 49ers last year? Does the referees help him? No, he just drove straight goddamn down the field. He ain't get no help from the referees. How about, how about the Philadelphia game? Kansas City drove four damn times in the Super Bowl and scored a touchdown all four times. How many times the referee had to help him? See, Philadelphia should have played some defense somewhere off in there, right? Stop this bullshit. I can name every single game with the exception of one. The New Orleans Saints and the Los Angeles and, 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 and the L.A. Rams. That is the only goddamn game that I can truly say the referees F over the Saints. There's one referee right behind the damn play. There's another referee right in front of the play. Now, the referee that's in front of the play, he's looking at the line of scrimmage. He's not even looking at the play. But damn, you got the back judge and the referee across the field. There is no damn way you don't see that blatant pass interference. If you want to complain, complain about that because you have a legitimate argument on it. But as far as all your conspiracy theories at the time, the Chiefs get all the calls and they get more calls. The Chiefs are the fifth penalized team in the NFL. Oh, but that penalty happens at a certain time. Well, shit, stop doing the damn penalty. You're not. Oh, I'm sorry. You should call that penalty in the game. You goddamn right you should call that penalty. It's a penalty. Don't make me sick with that shit. I'm going to move on because it's just making me mad. Football, there's going to be good calls. There's going to be bad calls. This just seems to me how people seem to more favor toward their team. If their team get a bad call that goes in their favor, ooh, it's the referee just made a bad call. But if their team don't get the call in their favor, then the referee is giving away this. You, you, you're so damn hypocritical and you make me sick. And especially the ones who don't know the damn game. Now, I can feel you if you know the game. Yeah, I can feel that. But some of y'all don't even know the game. You just repeat another shit that somebody else said. Miss me with that bullshit. If you want to beat the damn Kansas City Chiefs, you're going to have to go take it from them. Well, you're going to have to beat them. You're going to have to beat the referees. You're going to have to beat everybody. You might want to be concerned about beating them first, though, because the referees is not going to help you when you need help. Beat the hell out of them like Tampa Bay did. Beat them. That way you can't say anything. And that's the only way you're going to beat the champions, and it should be that way. Damn. Moving on. Listen, I had to get that out of my system. But this is, this, is what, this is what I want to talk about. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Vegas got the, got the Chiefs of, uh, almost a six-point uh, favorite. There's a reason. Vegas is normally pretty damn close about what, what the point spread is. There's a reason for that. Now, now, true enough, the Chiefs are missing a lot of players, and so are the Saints. And, and, and all of them are really key players. So it's kind of hard for you to gauge what's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with both teams and both sides of the ball. So I want to start off with the, I'm going to do the Saints offense, and then I'm going to do the Chiefs defense. So that way we can stay on key. Now here's, here's, the, here's the key for the Saints offense. Now I've heard uh, a lot of respect for this guy. I heard, I heard a friend of mine just basically telling me that the, the Saints should spread the ball out and, and use that spread formation to run the ball or to get the running game started. Here's the thing. What the Chiefs have struggled with on defense is they've struggled with the tight end. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals destroyed them with the tight end. Um, Gasecki, I, I think that's his name, came from Miami with the Cincinnati. He destroyed it. it, it shit, the, the entire Cincinnati offense was designed around the tight end that day. It was just tightening up the tight end. It was killing the Chiefs. Before that game, the Baltimore Ravens likely killed the Chiefs. In, in, in every game, 
with the exception of the Charger game, which the Charger didn't really have a good tight end. With the exception of the Charger game, Atlanta didn't use their tight end. They could they could use Pitts a lot better. But they didn't use their tight end as much. But the tight end seemed to be giving Chiefs a problem this year now. You got to be careful with Spagnola. Spagnola fixes crap, but he fixes it fast. So if you, you shouldn't put your entire game plan around the tight end, but you might want to use him some. But if you go and you spread the Chiefs out and you say, he said he spread them out and make them man to man, the Chiefs are a good man to man team. But that's not, the secondary is not your, your problem. When you want to spread a team out, that means that you're saying, I can block four and I better be getting rid of the ball fast because the Chiefs, when they see that they're going to send five, that's one you can't block. Because when you are spread out, you're spread out. That means there's no protection for Derek Carr. The Chiefs will blitz that shit. They'll blitz it and blitz it hard, and they should. Because your offensive line is not strong enough. So if you're going to spread them out, you better expect Derek Carr to get his ass tore up. And let's, let's not get it twisted. I'm a fan of Derek Carr, but if you put that much pressure on him, he's going to give that ball away. I can promise you he's going to give the ball away because it's too much pressure. You keep that pocket clean, Derek Carr to carve you up. But as soon as he starts seeing all that pressure, man, Derek Carr get rid of that ball. It's coming out of his hand, and he don't give a damn who he's throwing it to. I just don't want to get crushed. So spread offense is not cool, but what you could do is that you can come out there and you can you can bring you can dent that offense and give that offensive line ability, the ability to block them. How do you do that? You have to throw short passes. Short passes, two yards, three yards. Now, this strategy works against the Chiefs. Here's one thing you must understand. Do not get yourself in long yardage situations. And I mean long yardage is in six or more. Because if Spaz gets you in 36, or more than that, he's going to tear your ass up. There's nothing you can do about that. The man is genius. Sorry about that. Somebody called me. The man is a genius with what he does on third down. The Saints need to get in short yard situation. 31, 32. Now you got the Chiefs where you want them at. 33 even. Now you got the Chiefs where you want them at. But I'm telling you, if you stay in 36, he got your ass. You're going to get off the field. Every single time, because sometimes his blitzes are not designed to get to the quarterback. Sometimes his blitzes are designed to make the quarterback throw the ball faster than he wants to. It's a beautiful scheme. And, and while we're on the Chiefs defense, somebody better block Chris Jones. If you do not block Chris Jones, let's remind you what Jalen Carter did to that offensive line. Chris Jones is better. Not to mention... He can move around. He's not just a tackle. He can get in defensive end. They move around. They do a lot of different stuff with that front line. They show you four. They were six. I mean, it's so – you'll understand when you see it. But it's nothing short of beautiful when you watch their defensive scheme. Now, remember, the Saints fans on offense, that offense that the Saints run is the same offense as the 49ers run. And understand when I tell you this, the Chiefs has always beat the 49ers. But that's for a different story because the Saints ain't the 49ers. The Saints need to do something that for some strange reason, everybody's scared to do to the Chiefs. And that's come out there blazing. You show them they want you want to go deep. You show them you want to throw the ball down the field. You don't even have to complete it. You just have to put it in their head, and you'll be able to move the ball on the Chiefs. Now, can you execute and get touchdowns versus field goals? Because I've seen people move the ball on the Chiefs. I have. But when you get in that goddamn red zone, they shut you down. If the Saints can find ways to get touchdowns, not field goals, now you got a chance to win in this game. Your offense – the offense has to throw the ball short yards. It has to use the ball, the passing game, like the run. Short passes, short passes, third and shorts, third and shorts, short passes. Every now and then, take a shot, short passes. That's, that's, little, that's all. I have seen the Chiefs struggle with that type of offense. But if you come in there 
like the Baltimore Ravens did and try to smash them out the Chiefs, they're going to beat the hell out of you. You're not going to be – just hear me out here. Derrick Henry, under 50 yards. Uh, every running B. John Robinson, under 30 yards. Under 40 yards, I'm sorry. Every running back they face have not even punched 70 yards yet. You try to smash them, they're going to beat your ass. Start passes, control the offensive line, help that offensive line protect Carr by simply throwing the ball faster and throwing the ball being Take what the defense is giving you. Get two yards, take two yards. Get three yards, get three yards. You spread them out, they're going to tear your ass up. I watch them enough to know. Believe me, they're going to tear you up. Let me explain something to you. The Chargers last week scored the, their, their first touchdown in the first quarter. From that point on, they only scored three points. And I'm sorry, the referees, they had nothing to do with that. Three freaking points. They defense gave up nothing else. There's another reason why I want the Saints offense so short and control passes and control that line of scrimmage to get keep getting first down, first down. The, the, one, of the, one of the biggest reasons I want the, the Saints to do that is it simply keeps Mahomes off the field. It frustrates Mahomes when he's not on the field. It frustrates him when the defense is on a long drive. Just watch him. He gets frustrated because he wants to play. Once you're getting frustrated, then you got a shot. But I'm going to get to Mahomes at the very end of the video because I can tell you some things that frustrated him. I can tell you some things that bother him. Then I'm going to tell you how he is when the game's on the line. But anyway, Saints offense, short control passes. Get first down. So I control. You're not gonna do it with the run. You gotta use the pass like a run. Now, I know I ain't no damn offense coordinator, but you, you, the offense coordinator should know this. You've seen films on on, on Kansas City defense. You get in long run situations, they're gonna tear your ass up. It's simple as that. All right. That being said, I hope y'all enjoying this. I'm enjoying talking about it. And if you don't agree with me, I agree that I understand it. Just put it in the comments. I have no problem. All right, I'm going to post this video real soon because it's almost 4 o'clock. But anyway, maybe a little late. Let's talk about the Saints, uh, the New Orleans Saints defense versus the Kansas City Chiefs offense. Uh, y'all need to check that. I hear a lot of things. One dude actually said Travis Kelsey was slow and old. Man, Travis Kelsey ain't slow and old. The reason why you ain't seen Travis Kelsey like you're going to see him Sunday is because Mahomes wasn't throwing him the ball. Go back and watch video. Mahomes is literally trying to get rid of the ball so fast. He's not even letting Travis finish his route sometimes. And sometimes Travis is wide open. But Mahomes is protecting that left tackle, that blindside tackle, who's very weak. Well, the rookie was very weak. They got another one in there. He's good, but he's not what Mahomes wants. He, he, he watches those tackles. That's why Travis Kelsey's not getting the ball. Travis Kelsey will eat your lunch. If Tyron Matthews is guarding Travis Kelsey, Mahomes is going to throw it to him all day long. And he should because he can't guard him. He's too small. It's not because Tyron Matthews ain't good. because that the, the honey badge is the real deal. But he's too small. And all you got to do is just throw it high. That's 10, 15 yards every single time. And if you go to double cover him and say, I'm going to take Travis Kelsey out of the game, which is what I think they should do, I'm going to take Travis Kelsey out of the game. Then you got Worthy over the top. But you know what? You ain't got to worry about all that. Because Kansas City ain't going to do that. On offense, Kansas City is going to do something that they believe they can do. They're going to believe they can run the ball on you. And the reason why they believe they can run the ball on the Saints is because Philadelphia. Philadelphia never gave up on the run. They kept running it and running it until, bam, they wore them down and they got through it. Why? Well, Here's the difference between the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line and the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line. The Kansas City Chiefs offensive line power sits right in the middle. The two guards in the center, they get to the second level fast. Kansas City is not trying to beat you deep. They're just going four yards here, five yards there, three yards here. They want to get themselves from 33, 34, kind of what I'm telling the Saints offense to do. Why? The defense wears down. Wears down, wears down. And then in the third quarter, when the defense is going on the field that long, then they go for the deep shot. And they normally get it. 
not 50 yards, but 20 yards, 30 yards, just to show you that we know they're tired. They thought they were, if y'all sit there and y'all watch the scores with Kansas City. And man, let me explain something to y'all. But for those who don't know, the Kansas City Chiefs don't show you shit in the regular season. They only show you what you've seen on film. They give you nothing. That's why the game is so close. That's why they hardly never cover. They don't give a damn about beating the hell out of you. They just want to win. And that's what they do. They just win. And people always get it twisted. The Baltimore Ravens are the best team in football, actually. They're the best team in football. Oh, my God. Kansas City Chiefs can't beat them. Kansas City beat the hell out of Baltimore. And I wasn't surprised at all. Why wasn't I surprised? Because they don't show you shit in the regular season. He can't play on the road. They can't play on the road. Okay. They're really that good, guys. So what I'm saying, it's going to take a, a, a complete effort from the Saints to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, especially in Arrowhead. They can't go in there making mistakes like they did in Atlanta. They can't muff punts. They can't throw interceptions. They cannot make a mistake. Now, here's the, the crazy part. The Chiefs, watch this, turn the ball over three times against the Chargers, and they still won the game. Two times, I'm sorry. And they still won the game. You're starting to get the pitch. It's real simple. If the Saints defense want to stop the Kansas City Chiefs, they have to stop their running game. They have to make Mahomes one-dimensional. Now, that can backfire, too but they don't have a lot of weapons right now. This is the best time to do that. Make Mahomes one-dimensional. Take the run from him. If you can do that, these are the keys to winning. These are the keys to beating Kansas City. I'm just telling you like it is. Now, before I end this video, I'm going to talk about one more thing. That's the Mahomes factor. Mahomes haven't been playing well there. In this entire season, he hasn't been playing well. He knows it, too. Every press conference, he gets up there and he says, we got to play better. i got to play better. we got to play better. This sounds like a broken record. He does it every year. we got to play better. i got to play better. Mahomes can take over a football game. And the Saints defense have to be aware. Mahomes can take over a football game. And here's what you have to do. You have to make sure that he don't roll out to his right. If he roll out to his right, he's going to damage you. You have to keep him in the pocket. Because he wants to scramble. He wants to run around. He wants to make spectacular plays. It's his game. You've got to keep Mahomes in the pocket. And you're the front four for the camp, but the New Orleans Saints have to stay disciplined, gap discipline for those running backs and the quarterback. How many times y'all watch Mahomes? How many times? In the Super Bowls and the AFC Championship and big games, especially at home, even during a regular season, there's going to be a point to where he's going to take off on your ass. It's going to be a big play. Listen, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm still trying to get learn my production, learn how to use my software and all this different things. That's why I didn't do it live. But I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you have any comments, man, whether, whether you disagree or whether you agree, Put them in the comments. I mean, I expect people to disagree with me. I don't expect people to get on there talking about, don't piss me off. You make me sit, shut the fuck up. That, 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 that's useless. <laughs> useless. I'm not bad mouthing the Saints. I'm not bad mouthing the Chiefs. And anybody who know me know that I have stake in this game because I like them both. And this is very hard for me. So, and, and believe me, the last time they played three years ago in New Orleans, that was the hardest game I ever watched in my life because I found myself doing this. Throw the ball. Get it. Get it. Shit, my home. Damn, Breeze. I mean, that's crazy to watch a football game like that. But it really was a good game, and I enjoyed it every bit of it. And this is going to be probably the best game this Sunday, other than the Baltimore Ravens and Cincinnati Bengals. This will probably be the best, the best game. So I hope you all enjoy Monday night. I want to see your comments. Man, you see it on that. Subscribe to LTS, Richard Cole. Like, share the videos. Check out the gear. We're going to be bringing more gear to the table. This is about to go real. This is about to get real. And look, I want football fans to chime in on this. Don't come in here with that. Shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. Because I do know what I'm talking about. I mean, so 
all that is not necessary. If I don't say something that you like, then tell me why you don't like what I said. It makes it so much better. All right, guys, this is Rich Cole. Let's talk sports. Peace. I'm out.